Turning now to allegations of fraud on a massive scale. Just two weeks after five of Nigeria's most important banks were bailed out to the tune of $2.6 billion, four of their senior executives have been charged with money laundering, insider trading and illegally granting loans. All the accused have pleaded not guilty. From Lagos, Caroline Duffield reports. A sight Nigerians never thought they'd see top bankers on their way to court. Banking is a glamorous world here. Executives are more used to chauffeur-driven convoys. The four sacked CEOs, Cecilia Ibru, Berth Ebong, Oke Nwozu and Sebastian Adigwe, all pleaded not guilty. They and their teams are accused of fraud, giving loans to fake companies, lending to businesses they had a personal interest in, conspiring with stockbrokers to drive up share prices, there are many charges. The authorities here say their deals nearly destroyed five major banks. One banker is still missing. Erastus Akinbola, former CEO of Intercontinental Bank, is on the run, wanted by Interpol. And Nigeria's fraud police say it's not over yet. They still have 68 wealthy debtors in custody, more of Nigeria's elite who they say are the next to be charged. Caroline Duffield, BBC News, Lagos. It's one of the most hotly debated subjects in Africa, the brain drain, the movement of African professionals from the continent to Europe and America. But the economic downturn abroad seems to have flipped the script somewhat. The professionals are now coming back home. Caroline Duffield has been investigating the story in Nigeria. So over here he's putting a strip to connect in the motherboard to the sound card. Building a computer from scratch isn't easy. Building a company with jobs for 75 people to make computers in Nigeria is tougher still. The boss of this new company is just 26. Our prices are at least 10% lower than the competition. The American accent is the giveaway. Bode Pedro is what Nigerians call a repat. After school and college in the U.S., he's come home to build his dream, the aim to bring something new to this market. There is a cultural movement in Nigeria right now. It's more like an, a Nigerian renaissance. Um, it's an excitement both for people outside of Nigeria and in Nigeria to have the freedom and the will to do what they want, to actually develop themselves and their country. This has never been seen before in Nigeria. It's almost like a re-energizing of the Nigerian social and business network. And repats identify with that, and they want to be a part of that movement. Nigerians love their technology, but only around 5% of people living here even have access to a computer. And in a country of over 140 million, if you can get the right product at the right price onto that market, it is a huge business opportunity. One major challenge, though, is finding the right staff. Another phenomenon, recruitment agencies that bring people home. This one works with repat entrepreneurs searching for staff and it finds Nigerians who want to return. They believe as many as 15,000 people a month are flooding into the country, but Nigeria is a tough challenge. You set up a business in Nigeria, first of all, you need to look for accommodation to set up your business. You need to come with two years rent to start off with. And guess what, you need to have money because nobody, no bank is going to give you any money to set up your business in the first instance. And thirdly, you need to be on local government, meaning you provide your own water, your own electricity, your own security within reason. The new entrepreneurs have those challenges to overcome. Tunji Abdul and Kabir Audu left Wall Street for real estate here in Lagos. Well, majority of the stuff that you see here, we actually got uh, from a combination of China and, and Germany. And they've discovered it is worth it. At the end of the day, you can impact the society here in a lot higher level than you could if you were living in the U.S. or if you were living in the United Kingdom, or even in Asia, for, for, for that matter. Um, you can do things that inspire people, things that motivate people, things that move your country and is patriotic. They were warned it could never work, but returns on investments here prove otherwise. For business partner Kabir Audu, it's not just about money. It is nothing less than a duty. I think it was Ben-Gurion in the late 40s who, when Israel became a state, called on all Israelis from around the world 
to come back home and, and build an Israel uh, far greater than their wildest imagination. And that's the same kind of thing here. His next dream is not yet realized. It's thought it would be the first building of its kind here. Sustainable apartments, harvesting rainwater, and powered by solar energy. Dreams like this of creating a new Nigeria are risky. For those taking the risk, the business possibilities are endless. Caroline Duffield, Africa Business Report, Lagos. On the list of the most influential African musicians of all time, Fela Kuti is no doubt near the top. With over 70 albums to his name, recorded over four decades, starting in the 60s, Kuti pioneered Afrobeat, a style of music inspired by James Brown's funk and infused with heavy, tribal, trance-inducing rhythms. Paul McCartney and Gilberto Gill were longtime fans of the man who also became a political icon in his native Nigeria, where he spent his career singing about and railing against government corruption. His story has now come to America, opening tonight on Broadway. Here's Michael Ma. Elections to Rinko, Ambassador Plan Lamo very well. Elections to Rinko, Ambassador Plan Lamo very well. Fela Kuti performing in Nigeria at the height of his powers in the 1970s. You don't play with music. If you play with music, you will die young. Artist, prophet, politician, and provocateur. These were just a few of the labels attached to Fela Kuti during his crowded life. Fela is coffee beans and razor blades with this incredible ego, intelligence, and single-minded drive to tell his truth. Now Fela's story has been brought to Broadway in a show directed by the renowned American choreographer Bill T. Jones. A sacred monster like Fela is essential to any free society. You have to have a person like that who is totally not playing by the rules in order to understand what the rules are. From his artistic commune in Lagos, then the capital of Nigeria, Fela set about breaking most of the rules in his homeland and a few beyond. This, after all, is a man who was married to 27 women in his entourage, all at the same time. There has not been anybody in this whole politics in Africa. A deeply charismatic yet combustible character, Fela's music, known as Afrobeat, tantalized audiences throughout the world. Like I can hear the drums really well. The first time I heard the music, I was immediately, you know, just, just grabbed by it. Don't turn, don't turn. Aaron Johnson is the Broadway show's musical director. It's been his task to work with the cast to help bring the intoxicating energy and sheer unpredictability of a Fela concert to the stage. The performer who plays the lead was introduced to Fela's music by his African father. When Fela was on stage, she was controlling the whole show. And that's what's going on when, you know, when I'm up there in his shoes. People are moving on that stage like locomotives, man. Fela himself was knocked out numerous times during his career, but not by his dancers. Because, my brothers, what is happening in Nigerian prisons is nothing short of Nazism. His message, inspired by the Black Power movement in the United States, inevitably ran afoul of the military regime in Nigeria. In 1977, he released Zombie, a song which lampooned the nation's corrupt generals. The army retaliated by raiding Fela's commune. The attack resulted in his beloved mother's death after she was thrown from a window. Kill my mama. It's terrible, I'll show you. And Fela himself was severely beaten. Can you imagine if Bob Dylan, you know, routinely was, you know, grabbed by the police and had his hands broken after a concert? I like to say that his message is about what is the price of freedom. Whose coffin are you willing to carry? How badass are you? And is there something you really would give your life for? 
Broadway is a long way from Lagos, but the creators of Fail of the Musical are convinced that the work of this Nigerian legend still resonates around the world. Apart from their infectious Afrobeat, Fela's songs railing against injustice, racism and corruption are just as relevant today as they were when they were first performed some 30 years ago. Fela died of an AIDS-related disease in 1997, but the music and message of one of Africa's greatest artists has been preserved in countless books, documentaries, and now this Broadway musical. When you see that show rocking, like it's rocking, I think Fela would have tipped his hat to it, yeah. Banker is still missing. Erastus Akinbola, former CEO of Intercontinental Bank, is on the run, wanted by Interpol. And Nigeria's fraud police say it's not over yet. They still have 68 wealthy debtors in custody. More of Nigeria executives are more used to chauffeur-driven convoys. The four sacked CEOs, Cecilia Ibru, Berth Ebong, Oke Nwozu and Sebastian Adigwe, all pleaded not guilty. They and their teams are accused of fraud, giving loans to fake companies, lending to businesses they had a personal interest in, conspiring with stockbrokers to drive up share prices, there are many charges. The authorities here say their deals nearly destroyed five major banks. One ba Turning now to allegations of fraud on a massive scale. Just two weeks after five of Nigeria's most important banks were bailed out to the tune of $2.6 billion, four of their senior executives have been charged with money laundering, insider trading and illegally granting loans. All the accused have pleaded not guilty. From Lagos, Caroline Duffield reports. A sight Nigerians never thought they'd see. Top bankers on their way to court. Banking is a glamorous world here.